Hello, everyone. I'm Doug Dennerlein, the CEO of BetterWorks, and I've got the pleasure of introducing our next speaker, PGA Tour professional Luke List. Hey, Luke, thanks for joining us today. Hey, Doug. Hey, everyone. Thanks for having me. Great. I, uh, so we at BetterWorks um, this year decided we wanted to get a couple of brand ambassadors, we call them. And so we picked it, we went out to pick a PGA professional and an LPGA professional. And, you know, we had a long list to choose from uh, working with, you know, with a, an agency. And when I was looking through the background of people, I noticed that Luke had a degree in organizational development. And I thought, well, we're an HR software company and he's got a background in org organizational development. And I thought that made sense. And so we met Luke and, and uh, it was, you know, I think made to be. And the reason it was made to be is literally the first uh, time Luke put our, our name, our Better Works name on the front of his hat. He went out and played in the Farmers Insurance uh, Tour. And after 206 starts, I believe it was 206, something like that, Luke, he actually won the tournament. So uh, it was meant to be from the get-go. So, uh, you know, Luke has uh, been on tour since 2007. He's married to his wife, Chloe. They have two, uh, two children, Ryan and Harrison. They live in Augusta, Georgia, which is the home of the Masters, for those of you that are golfers. And, and uh, again, thanks for joining us today, Luke. Um, Absolutely. Why, why did you choose organizational development as a degree? Was it uh, something that you had an interest to fall back on in case this uh, PGA professional thing didn't work out? Or what was your interest? Yeah, in great, great question. Um, you know, I first chose Vanderbilt um, University in Nashville, Tennessee, um, you know, primarily for the golf and, and for um, pursuing my dreams of playing on the PGA Tour. And, you know, the education was a bonus and a factor that you never know what happens in life and not very many make make their dreams all the time as far as, um, you know, athletics go. So for me, um, getting a good degree, my mom is an educator and just that was really important um, for my family and myself to, to get a good education regardless of my goals. And then once I had kind of committed to Vanderbilt, the, um, you know, the human organizational development major was uh, kind of a no brainer as far as um, checking all the boxes for, for what, um, you know, I thought I might end up doing if I wasn't playing golf. So um, I still don't have an answer what that would be. Uh, unfortunately, I was able to, you know, chase my dreams and work hard and, and make, make the PGA tour. But, um, you know, it's, it's connected me with, with um, amazing people like yourself and, and to um, have that platform to, to, to discuss, um, you know, what I learned along the way. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, hey, Luke, you know, um, you know, as a, a goal of the company at, at BetterWorks is we want to help HR professionals, we call it make work better. Uh, you know, when we have spent a lot of time rethinking the performance management process, it's, uh, it's a, it literally was, it's 100 years old. It was invented by the U.S. Army and made popular by Jack Welch at GE. And, you know, it, uh, it doesn't change performance. People hate getting it. People hate receiving it. You know, <laughs> people hate giving it. But yet 75% of the people in the world still do this antiquated process. And I think largely because it drives a lot of downstream HR processes. And it's an immense amount of change that an organization would have to go through to move away from it, too. Um, you know, as a professional golfer, have you had the change things over time i mean your swing your team your caddy um you know or or have you kind of you had a path along the way and change wasn't part of it and you just wanted to hone what you had yeah i mean that's very very insightful because you know i go through that on a daily basis and i'm still learning um along the way after i mean i'm 37 years old now and a, a kind of a veteran and an older veteran on the pga tour now so there's so many young players, but the, the game of golf and the, the, you know, the way it's, it's changed is, um, you know, there's so many coaches. Now you have your, your swing coach, your short game coach, your putting coach, your, you know, your trainer, your, your, um, uh, physician, you have your mental coach. So the, you know, building a team around you is pretty integral to success and to having, um, that, you know, network of support, in every aspect, um, you know, of the game. And it's something that I've kind of evolved into. I think for a while it was just kind of me and my swing coach, who's a mentor of mine, Jamie Mulligan. And we, he kind of checked a lot of those boxes, um, but I've re branched out and, and kind of honed in on specific uh, coaches along the way. And it's, it's, it's challenging, you know, cause I think that, 
you know, of my nature, you, you kind of want to just put your head down and do it by yourself. But, you know, branching outside of that and realizing I need help. I need these people for specific areas of expertise. Um, you know, that's just having the, um, the ability to, you know, to humble yourself and say, okay, I need this help. And um, that's been, you know, like I said, evolved over time. And, you know, I've got a really good team around me now. And I think that the, the challenge then is once you get the team is being able to communicate with them your needs and also um, communicating with them across, you know, across everyone in total, in totality. So, um, you know, I, yeah. I don't have any necessary tips on that. It's just kind of learning and how to, you know, I, I view myself as the CEO of my, of my brand, of my company, and I'm trying to employ everybody the best I know how. And, and it's, you know, it's challenging, but it's, I know that that's the best way to drive, you know, like I said, my brand. Yeah. It's interesting. I've always said to people that, that have worked for me in my, you know, 40 year career now, which is kind of scary is, you know, the, the manager with the best team has the easiest job, <laughs> you know, um, but I think it's a little different in your industry in that you're still the person that has to go out and perform, you know, in during the tournament, you know, where, where other when other managers are encouraging other people to go do their jobs correctly, uh, you know, um, it's a, it's got to be kind of a in, you know stressful task for you, um, even though you have a great team. Can you talk a little bit about what's the stress that you carry on in a tournament? Are you are you relaxed or are, are you are you do you think about all that stress and all those people that you're carrying through this this process now? Yeah. How do you think about that? Yeah, great question. I mean, the the thing that I you know obviously golf is a physical game. You're swinging a golf club and you're hitting a golf ball. But the um, the mental side, the mental component, uh, I think is the most fascinating and um, the biggest area for improvement for for myself specifically. So that that mental uh, component, you know, you're out there for five hours plus sometimes, and it's just you and your caddy. Um, so I've employed, you know, uh, a specific, you know, sports psychologist, mental coach, whatever you want to call it, to help talk about those stresses to help talk about your goals, your fears, your, all that stuff. And, um, you know, at times it, it feels like it's pretty specific and other times it feels like it could be therapy really, but it's, it's super helpful just to have someone who's specific and aligning, you know, what your values are and what's important to you, you know, and, and across, you know, not even on the golf course, just with your family yeah. values and, and what you, what you hold, you know, really close to you. So, for me, yeah, it is stressful at times, but I think that, you know, there's peaks and valleys in any job or any any career, and I think that trying to maintain a level attitude or level approach to that and try not to make the highs ridiculously high and the lows ridiculously low. So I've, I've been able to do that, you know, for the most part my whole career, and, not, and you know, and that's not saying it's not tough. I feel like I've been struggling with my game the last couple of months, and that's you know, then you press on your people that are closest to you and for help. And um, the one thing I would say, even with the stresses, I've just gotten better at communicating um, with my team and my family and all that. Mm -hmm. So that's that's been a big area of improvement and area of help um, instead of kind of boxing it all in. And, and I think that's when it really gets um, the most stressful is if you don't really communicate well. Yeah, and, and, and I'm sure there's times when you know, you, you have to keep your team motivated when you're not performing that well. You exactly. Know, around you. And, you know, yeah. you, you hope obviously they're employed and they're paid, but it, at the end of the day, it's more of, they care about me as a person and they know what my values are and what's important to me. So I, I try to empower them to say, okay, like if you see me not, not checking those boxes work wise, value wise, then, then, then I need to hear it. And that's, that's a big thing because there's, I've seen a lot of players and peers and friends that have had, you know, coaches and myself included. And just over the years that you've had some, some people on your team that might be more yes people and just kind of not really pushing you to, to your best and kind of going along for the ride. And that's, that's pretty dangerous situation. So um, like I said, yeah. I'm, I'm really happy with my team and, and the way that each, each or, you know, whether I want to hear it or not, they're going to tell me uh, the truth. Yeah, it's. Uh, I, I have a saying that that if anybody has ever worked for me would know. It's Doug. That's a terrible idea. Let me tell you why. 
You know, it's uh, sometimes they just get on <clears throat> your passion, gets them on board, and they just go, okay, Doug's made up his mind, so let's go. And I'm like, nobody ever wants to make bad decisions like that. You know, the, the HR industry um, has probably had the two toughest years ever, you know, with the pandemic and, and that function inside of companies has been dealing with restructurings, uh, the wellness of their people in a really difficult time, this whole work from home environment. You know, it's been a, it's been a tough, I actually know so many people that have walked away from the industry in the last couple of years, you know, um, you know, and it's been tough for them. How, how have you, what, is there a process you go through Luke that when times are tough that you use to motivate yourself? Yeah, of course. I mean, fortunately now I have some young kids and my wife that are kind of my, my sounding board, my balance in life. So like, even when golf's not going great, your kids don't care, you know, how, how poorly you played or what's going on. They just want love and attention and affection. So, um, yeah. that that's a pretty easy perspective <clears throat> for me to keep it in check. Um, so I try not to leave all my work, stress, golf, you know, all that stuff. Um, I try to leave that at the golf course when when I come home, I'm a little more focused. That doesn't always happen, obviously, but that's a goal of mine to, 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 to be present with my family. Um, yeah. so that, you know, yeah, although it's been interesting, it's been, a, you know, interesting. We had our, our first, um, you know, our daughter was young when, when the pandemic hit and, you know, just having time to really reflect and spend with her. And then, um, you know, obviously travel was changed for us, you know, and we got back relatively quick on the spectrum of, of the sports sports world. And, um, it was, it was, it's just, you know, an interesting time to look back on and obviously still going. Um, you know, it's, it's affected a lot of people's work lives and, and personal lives. And, um, you know, I just think that most things in life is, is perspective and how you kind of view the situation and you can always choose to view it, you know, one of two ways. And, um, I'm still always striving to, to view my own situation in a positive light most of the time. How, how was the pandemic for, for you? I mean, um, was it, you know, it, it, boy, talk about a change for you. I mean, no, no traveling, no golf. I mean, for over a year, uh, was it was it yeah. stressful? Was it? But you're like, hey, this is nice. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you know, yeah, I, for, for... a lot of different emotions. I think we because we were at the Players Championship in Jacksonville, Ponte Vedra, and we, um, you know, pretty much called the tournament after one round. So I remember we, I, just my wife and my daughter at the time, and we drove back home, and just like everyone, not really understanding the the scope of how, how, you know, the next little bit was going to play out. And I, I didn't really understand it because, you know, for me, I'm very practical in the sense that I, I have my routine. I have the, you know, like, I don't like to be told to, to stay inside all that. So it, it took me a little adjusting to um, kind of, okay, I, I don't have to play golf right now. So I'm going to, you know, I tried to work out a little bit. I tried to, we would go on these long walks and then the, fortunately the weather was really nice in the first half. So we were outside, but, but keeping our, you know, so safe distance at the time they were, they were preaching that. And then, um, yeah, it was just nice to spend some time with family. I, I, I'm not going to lie. I was definitely a little, uh, antsy, um, to get out and about. I like to, you know, because of my nature of my, my work traveling, I'm, I'm always kind of on the go. And even when I have downtime, I like to be active and do stuff. Um, out of the house so um yeah it, it was a little adjustment but it was fun to you know we did some interesting videos for some sponsors and some then you you know you, everyone buys the golf net and the putting putting mats and so you start practicing in your garage and little stuff <laughs> like that chipping and chip my wife's like get out of here quit chipping in the house and um so it was it was just you know adapting to the situation just like everyone and you know fortunately yeah. we we didn't have any any serious illnesses or any any tragedies like a lot of people had which is which is horrible and um uh, so we were very thankful for our health yeah yeah you know i i've, I've always said um i've always had the saying that there's no such thing as work life balance i i call it work life integration you're yeah from my opinion integrating work into your life um can you talk a bit about how 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 do you how do you do that? How do you balance your your home life with your golf life? Does your family travel with you most of the time, or or I would think that would make it even more difficult if they were on the road sure. with you all the time. Well, yeah. 
Yeah, great, great question. It's a balance a little bit because as they're young, young children, you want to see all the stages of development. And, you know, fortunately, they're in just kind of a, um, a uh, they call it Mother's Day out here, but it's school, but it's um, not, you know, not as developed as elementary and kindergarten when they're doing all their learning. So um, mm. it it's a good opportunity for us to travel together as a family, we, which we do quite a bit. Um, logistically there's some of some weeks where it's just easier for my wife and family to stay home and they've got a really we've got an amazing um her parents my in-laws are incredible help and um just the routine of their activities and um stuff going on and then once they get a little older with school obviously it's tougher to miss miss that much uh the pj tour has a fantastic child care program as well so they feel like they're they're not missing out on interaction with other children and, and learning as well so um yeah, well, upcoming at the start of the new year, we're going to do four or five weeks on the road, all in the West Coast, and which will be really fun. We have a lot of friends out there to uh, spend time with. So uh, the, you know, the dynamic is it's tough, but I, I wouldn't trade it for anything because you, you just spending time with them on the road, you feel like you're not missing um, yeah. a lot of their development and all the fun, the fun phases. It's, it's hectic and it's not always the easiest, but it's, um, you know, I've got an amazing wife that, that uh, makes it all work. So, yeah, I, I, I like you. I traveled an immense amount, and I have four children, so I, I got double on you. Um, sure. You know, and I would travel Monday through Friday. So I, I think what it also did for me is when I was home, I was very present. You know, you had, sure. you, had you kind of had to be there. <clears throat> um, Luke, you know, I think one of the, one of the funnest things for me ever was watching you the first week that we you know entered our relationship together and the farmers and. And you, you did really well, kind of on the backside of, of, of the last day, and ended up tying Will Zell Torres for, you know, the lead. And then you guys went on the playoff on 18. You both ended up within inches of each other in a sand trap. And then, you know, you both hit up uh, on your approach shots to 18. You got a little closer than he did. He missed his putt. You made your putt. Can you talk about what it was like to stand over a putt to win your first tour? <laughs> win after all, all that effort since 2007 it had to be mind-boggling yeah you know it's funny as i i played really well i was just in a really good headspace as far as trusting my game and i, I felt like i was putting pretty well and i love that golf course so there was kind of a few things that started adding up in the week um but i wasn't driving at my best actually so i was finding myself in some troublesome spots off the tee in the rough and the bunkers um, and even the final round, I'd hit it in some, some fairway bunkers and, and was just very persistent with my attitude about, okay, I can still score even though that I'm not driving at my best. And um, that kind of, you know, led to obviously in the playoff, hitting a poor drive that um, I was still convinced I was able, was going to make birdie. And that was just that mindset uh, led to the confidence mm -hmm. to pull off that shot. So, um good lesson learned there. I mean, it's very tough to, to have that mindset consistently all the time, but that's kind of the, the bar for where I'd strive to, to be, um, you know, thinking regardless of, of outcome of, of where, you know, how troublesome some things can be, you can still get the most out of your game. Um, and that, that's a life lesson too, for sure. Yeah. Well, how exciting though. I mean, to finally, to finally get there. So now it's, you know, now you just got to do a repeat. <laughs> yeah, it. exactly. Yeah, um, you know, you thought... was... I was saying, yeah, the fast. moment was amazing. Was your, fam to, was your family there? Call. Yeah, so the the ending, the culmination, once I realized I won, was pretty emotional just to be have them there, and uh, that was, you know, a lifelong goal and dream. So to to share it with them was extra special, and obviously the emotion of grabbing your kids and and holding your wife and everyone was was pretty storybook. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, you know, uh, maybe in closing, you know, you, you talk about the pursuit of personal excellence. You know, uh, I, I think it's kind of a thing that, that you talk about. Can you can you share with the, the group, you know, what, what that what kind of what that thing is all about and what you do with it? Sure. Um, you know, again, that's a that's a battle that I face every day. And I think that, you know, with it, with as hectic as life can be, I think that for my personal excellence, you know, striving to even as simplifying as having a daily plan and um, kind of an agenda and not being thrown off when something 
gets in the way or get um, comes up and, and it, whether it's, you know, a car breaking down or, or appointment not, you know, being met or whatever. It's just so for me, when I'm operating my best, um, I feel like I'm adaptable. I'm able to um, make the most out of my time on a daily basis, but also um, adapt. Like I said, if anything's, you know, coming up in my way. Yeah, it's uh, maybe for me, the notion of uh, perfection is understanding that everything isn't perfect and being able to, you know, yeah, go with the punches no when, when life throws you some curveballs, which it always does, right? So Yeah, yeah, no, there's no doubt about that. And, you know, I think that, you know, w with what I do playing golf, you know, striving for perfection and in an imperfect sport, I mean, that's kind of a pretty relevant to any job really i mean it's there's no barometer for perfection in a lot of things and it's you know we get in our head thinking we have to be so perfect and i think once you let the reins down on that that's something i tell myself in my head all the time is you know i just have to be just have to be good enough and and that's you know a lot of that is self-imposed that that's striving for perfection so um, i think that yeah. you know we're probably our, our own toughest critic sometimes in a good way but also you know, can be detrimental. So just, you know, loosening the reins on that a little bit is obviously very helpful. Yeah, that's a, that's a really good point, Luke. And I, you know, the other, the other thing that's kind of amazing to me about your sport is the difference between, you know, the winner and the other, you know, losers, if you will, is, is so min it's so it's can be three shots. It can be four shots. It's literally nothing, you know, there, so I, I think there's a, a bit of, a bit of luck in your game that's interesting too because you're you're everybody's so good these days it's not like there's a couple of people that you know are out there i mean maybe the top 10 but it, the, the sport is so dynamic these days it's crazy and and you have to feel it too all these people coming out of really young are doing really well really young so it's pretty interesting yeah no doubt and for me personally like you know obviously it's very difficult to win it took me 200 plus to starts to, to get one win and I, you know, I still haven't been able to win since. It's very difficult. The game's gotten way more advanced as far as the amount of good players coming at a younger age. And yeah. so if your barometer is only winning, you're, you're, it's the wrong thing, you know, unless you're Tiger Woods. Um, you know, it's even the top guys struggle to win multiple times a year. And, and um, you know, for me, it's more about the pursuit of excellence and, and my craft as far as trying to keep improving, trying to keep, uh, the love for the game, the passion, and then incorporating that all with my values, with my family and my, you know, my other endeavors off the golf course. Uh, then I, then I feel like I'll have a fulfilled career if I can keep that in perspective. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, Luke, um, Hey, we're, we're very excited and so glad you're our brand ambassador on the PGA tour and I appreciate you taking some time with us today and sharing your thoughts. And, and uh, it's good to see you. Maybe uh, are you going to be at the AT&T? Um, still, still working on my schedule, but I know we got it. We got to tee it up at some point together. All right. Sounds good. All right. All the best, Luke. Thanks for being here today. Thanks for having me, Doug and everyone. And, uh, look forward to seeing everyone soon. Thank you. All right. Take care. Bye-bye now.